Hey guys, it's David from 3D Make It, and today we are talking Marlin 2.0.8. Let's jump into it. So Marlin 2.0.8 released yesterday, and it is here in all its glory. I'm going to show you how I look to decide if I'm going to upgrade a machine from 2.0.7.2, for example, or an earlier version of Marlin, uh, and what considerations you should take when you go into a new Marlin. But before we get there, I want to show you guys exactly what we look at to determine whether or not upgrading is necessary or if we just stick with our current firmware. So let's jump in and I will show you. So if we cruise on over to the Marlin main page here, we can see that the new version is out. So again, at the top here, we have 2.0.8 and we can download it straight from here. We can go to the GitHub and view the release information. And what we really want to do is check to see what's new and is it really something we need to run down. Now to do that, we're going to go down to the detailed underneath here. So it's down here and it just says detailed release notes. Now when you click that, it'll open up and it takes you to like all of Marlin. Now, Marlin 2.0.8 being the newest release is at the top, which is awesome. And this is kind of where we go to see, hey, is this something that we need to update to or are we okay where we're at? Now, for the majority of you, if you've been running your printer and everything has been working just fine, you might not have to worry about updating right away. But there are a few things that actually have been added in now some of them have worked before and they've just made them better or changed the g-code for them or some of them are just brand new features and they're in here so there's stuff for cnc and laser milling if you're interested they've added some more like test firing for lasers or servo options this is a really cool option they've added a spindle servo here if you're a cnc person where you can actually use rc motors now to drive a spindle which is kind of cool uh, home z first is a cool feature if you're not using a z probe generally speaking you can start with your z probe down just to home off of that end switch and you might say well what if it misses the bed uh, who cares? That's why uh, you're not using a probe. So what you're doing is just leveling down to that click switch. So it can start with Z and then do the others just fine. Now, the exception to that uh, feature is if you're really bad at bed leveling <laughs> and, and the nozzle would end up below the actual bed, then you wouldn't want to use that. Uh, there's Smuff support, which is the MMU2 clone. Now, I, I'm not going to go through and read all of these, but there are a few interesting ones that I think that could make the difference for you, whether or not you upgrade right away based off the new features. Now, one of that is they added more G34 features. So if you use this feature uh, now, there's more things added into it, and it has been made better. So that would be a reason to go forward. The other thing that you can kind of check out is these probing heaters off, wait for hot end. That makes so that when you probe, things start heating up or not heating up. Now, the reason you'd want to probe hot is if you're using an inductive probe or like a pin to sensor, those sensors actually fluctuate a little bit based on heat. So when they come down to do their inductive probe on that metal build plate, it could change and that's been made better. Um, there's some algorithm stuff that they've improved for UBL uh, and, and just some new features that they've added in here. So, I've listed a few of the changes in the new section here. Now I'm not uh, dissing <laughs> or or saying there's not enough. Like this meat pack in itself, this Octoprint plugin. If you guys haven't checked it out, we've got a video on that one coming out soon. But it's a compression algorithm for G code. It's really really cool, and it's supported now in Marlin 2.0.8. And the other kind of big deal is actually right below it, the SMT32 shared media before. And I, if you've watched our videos, we showed you how to kind of uh, hook up your board so you could FTP into it, drop the new firmware from Octoprint, and then trigger 
the reboot and that was fairly hard on the STM32 architecture. Well, they fixed that. So that's another reason why you might want to upgrade your board. Now, those are all the new features. And again, if you come through and you check out these features on your own, you might be able to decide just by a few new features in this list that, hey, bingo, I want to upgrade, which is great. Now, the next section I want to tackle is just the board support. Now, this would be a reason for you to actually come in and update your Marlin right away. If you were using the nightly builds just to get board support. So for myself, even I had the E3 Turbo and I will go through uh, in another section in a second here. But they've actually updated that to change how some of the pins work. And if you remember, we changed pins in that video and I'll link it up here or somewhere wherever that happens to go but we changed some pins so that the controller fan would actually work on a one off right off of a pin on the controller and they've added that into marlin but you can see here there is a vast increase of support for lots of the new big tree tech boards like built in into 2.0.8 uh, and including <laughs> the skr 2.0 Oh, and I want to talk about that one just for a brief second. So the SKR version 2.0 came out recently. If you haven't ordered it already or haven't heard of it already, there is an issue with the board and how they actually map some of the grounding leads on the board that would cook your 2209 or any other stepper that would be using the centerless homing uh, on the board. Now the fix is just ground them with the pin on the top and I... I would highly recommend going to Big Tree site, checking out all their information. This isn't a video on that, but this is a video on Marlin 2.0.8. And we just saw that the SKR 2.0 is supported. And I want to mention it right now because it is a feature that they have where the reverse stepper detection was built into the board. And Marlin actually added that into support into Marlin 2.0.8 in their updates. So that is there now too. Let's just jump back in and we'll finish up going through this section. After the new boards, it's important to check out configuration updates. I've been using the bug fix for a while that has been labeled 2.0.8 in the actual Marlin build that I've been doing. So I know lots of things are actually working for me. So if I had a board that was running bug fix, I could move it over to 2.0.8 fine. Now you can see here, uh, I just want to point out a few updates that have happened. And one is sanity checking for centerless homing. So if you guys aren't familiar, when you hit that build button, that it actually does some sanity checking to make sure you have all the features enabled. And if it fails that the compiler spits out one of those yellow messages that you should read and it will tell you exactly what you do to fix it. The other interesting one is Z multi end stop with Z probe homing now if you have the probe enabled you can see here if we hover over the number it tells you what it does description if probe is used for homing then z multi as is also defined we're going to prevent z multi end stops just because we're probing with the or homing with the probe sorry now when you're going through all these features like i said you're going to be able to hover over them and actually see the number the pr request for them or at least what they have done to do it. Now, if you're really unsure, what I would suggest, like for this example here, multi-Z stepper inverting. It seems simple, but, and we can actually, by with just English language, figure out that what that does is let us actually invert multiple Z steppers. But if we weren't sure, we could right click it or click it, and then I'm just gonna open it in a new tab. And it comes right into the request number. And then you see this resolves these requests here by adding a configuration and code that allows a secondary and greater Z stepper to step in a different direction from the primary. So think about situations when you're auto leveling, that's, that's when the steppers would move opposite to each other. Now, the other cool things that they've added are things like when you use advanced pause, 
you can now use advanced pause and it will let you manually run the filament through. It will unlock the stepper driver so it's not locked. So if it all doesn't come out, you don't have to like click the menu and like try to get around without actually starting it. So you can actually use the stepper and it becomes unlocked. Or when you're doing stuff like G34, like we did in another video and we'll have that link for you, it will lock the stepper that it's not using and then it will go up and down that way to get your bed level. Now these things are all in this list and like I said, I'm not gonna go through the whole list. I'm just showing you how we decide. So scroll down, you have your boards, you have your updates, and then you have optimized things. So this is stuff that's just still there that they've made better. Now, there are a few things, and I've already mentioned the G34 stepper locking, and that's an optimized feature, right? They've also made it so that if you're printing, you cannot eject the SD card anymore. So <laughs> M22 doesn't do it. It just waits until you're done printing, and then you can use that. So there's updates, modifications, uh, let's call them fixes for people that are doing things they shouldn't do and that just makes it more universal and easy for all of us to use now there are board updates meaning like pins might have changed maybe they're adding things we talked about the e3 turbo how they changed some pin stuff well here's the e3 dip and then the e3 turbo is in this list as well the skr expansion board has better support right and i'll, I'll let you guys go through all of them if you want and remember this page here can be reached a couple ways, but the easiest is when you're on that Marlin homepage, go to that detailed release notes and then you can read them. So let's bounce out of here and I want to give my final thoughts, I guess, on is it something we should update to right now? All right, so just before we get to the final thoughts, I have to send out a huge thank you to all of our patrons. So Hells Johnson, thank you for being a supporter at the tree support level. Everybody else on the list, you're awesome, and thank you for supporting us. Without your help, lots of the behind the scenes stuff, and even in front of the scenes stuff, couldn't happen without you, and we appreciate you. Okay, so time for David's final thoughts on Marlin 2.0.8 from a high level view. Will it work? Yes. I've been using the bug fix for a while. And actually, after I finish recording this video, I'll probably pop on and do a bit of a live stream. And so if you guys happen to be on tonight after this video drops, uh, I'll do a bit of a live stream with me actually configuring it for uh, my enders using 2.0.8 just to get everything up a level. And there is a reason for it. So check out those live streams. But for you, should you update? Well, if you have a brand new board and you're the canary down the tunnel, chances are there wasn't technical support for it, but it's in here now. Marlin adds a lot of boards all the time. So if you've bought a new board recently, including up to the SKR 2.0, there is support in Marlin 2.8 for that, or sorry, 2.0.8 for that. Now, there are feature sets that are new and useful. If you go through those new useful ones, and I pointed out a few, and you find use of them, then yeah, for sure, upgrade. If you are at a point in your existence where you're just doing a firmware migration right now, don't use the old version, use the new one. When should you not move forward? Again, we kind of talked about it, but if you are literally moving forward a version of firmware because you just feel like it, so you're not gaining a feature, you're not gaining support for your hardware, like boards or expansion boards, then probably you don't need to update I mean, if you're just one of those people who likes to tinker and do it anyway, for sure. But if you're one of those people looking for advice on when to update, well, if you're not gaining, don't update. You're fine. All the safety features have existed for a while now in Marlin. And as long as you have things like thermal runaway enabled, you're fine. So if you made it this far, you are awesome. Thanks for tuning in and checking out the first little bit of Marlin 2.0.8. I hope that you find some use out of this video to help you maybe decide whether to upgrade or not. Until next time, remember to click that like, share, and subscribe button. Thanks for watching. And did you know we do have a Patreon? It's at patreon.com slash 3dmakeit 
or you can check out all of our socials at www.3dmakeit.ca. You guys are great. Have a good one.